Y'all ready to see some corn seed go in the ground? I know I am. Oh man, what a morning it has been. It is now 3.13 and I still haven't put any seed in the ground. You wanna know why? Cause that tractor wants to be a butthole. So now that tractor is dead. Uh, it won't turn a crank. It just stopped, scream low voltage and then- Literally anything and everything that could go wrong has gone wrong and a good part of them have been nothing but electricals i know for what they cost me they better do good a uh, corn seed took a tremendous jump this year I mean Today it has been, uh, I think I'm about ready to call it a day. It's about 10 o'clock and I am whooped. I feel like Kelly done taken a stick and beat me with it. Been a long one, but it is ending up on a positive note. We're, uh, yeah, when I get done with this little field here, we'll be about 64 acres planted since. 5 30 or so we've been making some pretty good progress although I, I was hoping to have about twice that amount covered in day one just not meant to be though we're going about uh 23 acres left on this farm to finish up in the morning then move across the road got another two farms totaling uh 75 acres or so but at least we're going home uh, everything's in one piece and nothing to work on in the morning just fire it up and go straight to planting i'll see y'all out here bright and early tomorrow let's see if it wants to start this morning Come on, big girl. Oh yeah. Kelly's already out spraying. Matt's behind these trees planting. I've got a new camera to test out today, so let's start doing something. We're already off to a way better start than we were yesterday. That's for sure. Let's spread some fertilizer or something. Well, we get a nice and early start this morning. Uh wait on kelly spray that little spot over there she didn't spray it yesterday afternoon because it's right next to a neighbor's weed and wind was blowing pretty bad yesterday so uh, she left a couple passes out right there next to the weed going to get it this morning with the wind's not not blowing real bad and he's over there waiting on uh, more fertilizer to show up he's about 60 acres in front of me right now so i got a whole lot of catch up i gotta do today and yeah, we also put a drift control agent in uh with the spray just because of the wind uh you run an interlock from co-op and it seemed like it's doing a real good job keeping those uh fines on target rather than blowing off towards the field it's doing a real good job we got about a about a seven mile an hour wind right now i'd say let her get finishing out of my way and i'll be ready to roll on uh, good morning it is now tuesday may 2nd um i got up early this morning so i knew i needed more chemical on the truck so i got that done matt helped one tank into another tank got out here i need to get spraying pretty quickly today because we're supposed to get uh winds pretty high and i won't be able to spray so uh it's eight o'clock uh he's already started i'm gonna start i gotta spray uh like 23 uh, not even like 15 acres and then I have to fill up again and then go to the next farm um, I think there's 55 over there and then there's 17 on the other one and by that time hopefully we'll be moving to the next farm that we're going to be doing and then um, I'll be far enough ahead of him that I don't have to worry so much about the wind so that is 
what I'm doing. So I was that close. <laughs> Missed it by that much. Literally just taking a turn and going that way and I would have been done. So now I have to go fill up again and then uh, go across the street. Andy's already over there. Ah, <sighs> oh, that's the worst. You know, for as bad a day as we had getting started yesterday, we're gonna have just a good day today. But you know what the really funny thing is? You know, last several years y'all been watching this, normally we have problems steering and planting. It, it's always been with the planter and probably 90% of the time it's been electrical problems with the precision planting side of it. You know, wiring harnesses and sensors and other crap like that. Ever since we started planting soybeans, we've had literally everything else go wrong but haven't had one single problem with the precision planting stuff. It's been uh, operating flawlessly. You know, what I thought was some problems with some uh, load sales and, and uh, you know precision planting stuff actually wound up being mechanical problems on the planter and uh, I was just seeing the problem there on the monitor. I'd say that's a positive. Hopefully it will continue to uh, stay that way. You know, no electrical problems or hardware problems on the planter and it operates flawlessly for the rest of planting season. Well, that was quick. We just ran out on what we left off of last night. We had about, give or take a thousand pounds left in the buggy overnight. So we're going to just shut it off and there should be a fertilizer truck on its way over here. It should be about here now, really. So we're going to turn everything off, let our fans die down here, and make a trek back to the across the street. I'm trying to rock and roll this morning, I believe. That's what I'm trying to do, at least. Let's see, I saw Kelly fill it up, so she's already ran at least one tank through it. I guess we are all rolling. This new camera is crazy. I can see myself on the front of it. <laughs> it's wild. Jeez. It's crazy. You're looking at my elbow or my shoulders right now. Well, I see Kelly was filling up. They're both parked at the water truck right now. Guess it's a good break time. Well, our fertilizer truck has arrived and I just drove under its auger here, so now time to get out and load it up. going in there now and and since nobody else is here to like go down there when I say it's full nobody's here to shut the gate or anything I've got another GoPro actually sitting right there on that back corner and it's hooked to my phone right here don't mind the crack but I can watch it watch it being filled up and I can tell exactly when it needs to when I need to pull up or back up and shut it off so it's working out great but we're getting loaded up here and I need to pull over just a little bit it's coming out the front for some reason so yeah we're filling up and should be ready to spread some more here in just a minute
soil condition. So I gotta say, this, you know, what we planted in soybeans and corn so far have been the best soil conditions I can remember planting into in uh, 10 plus years. I don't know, normally in April, I mean, the ground is just saturated and you're planting in the really heavy conditions probably when you ideally you really shouldn't be planting. But uh, this, uh, this April has been pretty dang dry this year. And we got we got the absolute perfect soil moisture to plant into. Now if we just get that ground temperature up just a little bit, uh, this corn will come up out of the ground blowing and going. Right now my uh, smart farmers are showing a soil temperature below 55 degrees. Not really sure how accurate that is. It never really seems to match up to my thermometer. Uh, so take it for what it's worth. So we're gonna get these uh, last couple of uh, short passes done. And, uh, we're not out of seed yet, but I'm right over here at my seed trailer, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the seed on. It should be enough for the next two farms, and I should be just about empty when I get done with them and ready to swap over to the next variety. All right, we started out with 36 bags of corn seed in the planter. Showing right there, I planted almost 27 bags, so we should have about nine bags left in there. And I got my corn order spreadsheet pulled up here, and uh, looks like for the next two farms, we're gonna need a total of 25.2 bags. We're gonna go back here and add, uh, add right at 16 bags to the planter. If I've got, if that's actually what I got on the trailer and that should have us good to go. Start getting pretty low. Yeah, definitely less than one bag in uh, each of these hoppers left. All right, we got uh, 12 bags of the 65.95 left. And then we got uh, a total of eight bags of the 65.93 left but I was going to say four bags for refuge for my Pioneer 1464 because they're about the same maturity. So we're going to use four of these, all 12 of these, and that should get us right there and being done with these two farms. Again, the refuge, the 6593 is going to be going in rows three, seven, and 10. And, and then the 6595 with the mid is going to be going in all the rest. And that way we're going to be uh, complying with our uh, refuge requirements of having, you know, uh, we're required because we're in Cotton County to have 20% uh, of our corn acres in a non-BT variety to uh, uh, keep uh, these uh, worms and the uh, BT traits designed to kill to keep them from becoming resistant to the BT traits. So we're just trying to do our part to be good stewards of this technology to hopefully keep it around and uh, effective for as long as possible. And then also, if you've been watching our channel for the last couple years planting uh, this product right here, it's not going to be any stranger to you, but it's a Micronox seed inoculant. And what this product is, is a biological that uh, really, that my test has shown really helps promote yield. We tested this product four years straight on our corn before I used it large scale. And... In those four years, not only did this product never lose a trial, it never even lost a side-by-side -side comparison. We had four years of replicated uh, trials on our farm, and in each year, on each plot, the treated outyielded the untreated right next to it. That's about as impressive result. I mean, it's almost impossible to find anything to where one thing will always out yield the control in every single case. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it. I've never seen variety trials, never seen it in any other kind of product trials. But in this case, in our test, it definitely made a big believer out of me. And uh, biologicals is coming on strong in the ag industry. Uh, everybody's now got their own biological product. Problem is, a lot of this stuff is really expensive. Especially a lot of these uh, nitrogen fixing biologicals. I mean, you'd be looking anywhere from $15 to $25 an acre for the most part from what I've seen. This product right here, putting it out at a rate of one pound for every five acres, cost me uh, just a hair less than $5 per acre. And it's proven to have a 100% uh, improvement return on investment for me 
two every time I've used it. I mean, you can't beat that. It's kind of a pain to apply because it's a dry product and I got to sprinkle it on the seed and mix it in real good and, and whatever, but uh, stuff works. Now, if you are set up for in furrow on your planter, which we're not, I'm resisting that change as long as I can. Eventually probably have it, but it's just another headache to deal with. Uh, they do make a more concentrated liquid product that you can put out in furrow, which the application on it would be real easy. But uh, I'm really big believers in that. If you're interested in trying it yourself or inquiring about it, go to uh, www.sonoagfertilizer.com and you can get their contact information and see the products that they offer. But I'm a real big believer on it. I've seen, in my test, I've seen anywhere from a three bushel per acre increase to almost a 20 bushel per acre increase and with a 100% win rate on that product and again I'm, I'm just telling you because I believe in the product I think uh, it could potentially help your farm definitely try it uh, do your own replicated strips before you go do it large scale just don't take my word for it but uh, you know I'm not being sponsored by them or anything I'm not getting any kind of product for free I'm paying you know full retail price for that product just like just like you will so I'm just telling you about it because uh, I think it could I think it could really help your production if you're a corn farmer now I have tried this product on uh, cotton and soybeans and wheat too and I've not seen the same yield results on uh, those crops as I have corn and I, I really don't know really don't know why but uh, corn's the only one I use it on. But the big part of this product is azotobacter, which if you know bacteria, azotobacter, azotobacter is a species of uh, free-living bacteria that sequesters nitrogen from the atmosphere and puts it in the soil. Kind of like rhizobia on soybeans, except azotobacter do not require any kind of symbiotic relationship between the corn plant and the bacteria. That means that the bacteria is not taking any kind of resources or energy from the plant in return for producing the nitrogen. It just lives in the soil and it produces nitrogen. Now it won't produce near as much nitrogen as rhizobia does, but it will add a little bit of extra nitrogen, which I really think might be where we're seeing the yield increase from uh, on the on the corn. You know, you know an extra maybe 10, 15 pounds of nitrogen per acre, you know, that, that could explain the Anywhere from three to seventeen bushels per acre yield difference between. And it's not just the Zotobacter that's in there. There's a bunch of other stuff. Plus, there's uh, mycorrhizal fungi in there, which we're really trying to build in our soils just to expand the uh, reach of the uh, cash crops root system and picking up nutrients and, and water and everything else. So, anyway, there's a label. Y'all give them a shout. You can see in the seed box. You can see the blackness on my finger. It's coated the seed pretty good, especially. Uh, you know what I do is I'll uh, pour in one bag and then I'll mix it around with my glove and everything and uh, get the bottom layer pretty coated and then as I add a bad bag I'll add some more on top and then uh, the final bag I'll add some more on top and then as the planter unit's bouncing going through the field it just kind of uh, you know it, it gets around and coats every seed uh, you see this uh, seed is uh, not as uh, bright green as what it was whenever I filled up so it coated it good plus I got it all over my hand there. Well it looks like the uh, filling stations are getting a little crowded over here. I guess I'm gonna have to wait my turn. I'm out and uh, looks like Matt's filling up seed and Andy's filling up so just have to wait. next field is go right across the road i wish all of my farms were just like in one huge block right here where the only time i'd have to get on the road is uh to go from the shop to the first field i'm sure that's every farmer's dream though but in reality not many uh not many farmers get to experience that Well, for once today, everything is running really, really smoothly. Kelly's done on this farm. She's got another 60 acres to go. 
uh, before she's done for the day what all I hope to get planted today. Andy's uh, done with this farm, off to the next farm. He's already got a uh, fresh uh, fertilizer truck, about half empty. I'm gonna try and get another truckload in today. Try and get him out a pretty good ways ahead of me because uh, tomorrow morning he's gonna have a rough time. Uh, he told me he's got a dentist appointment. Gotta have a couple teeth yanked out. Oh man, I feel for him. He said he's gonna be in as soon as he gets out of the dentist's office, but uh, I I know from experience he ain't gonna be 100%. So I'm gonna try and get him out as far ahead of me as I can today to where he can have uh, hopefully a, a pretty easy day tomorrow. But anyway, I don't know if Andy explained it or not. Uh, you probably think, well, why is Andy spreading fertilizer? Didn't he just get done spreading fertilizer on all your farms? And well, yeah, he did. What he was spreading then was DAP and potash we were variable rating our blend uh, to what we needed according to soil test but what he's putting out today is urea and ammonium sulfate and we're just going with a flat rate of it uh, urea and ammonium sulfate is going to apply our first shot of nitrogen to the corn and the ammonium sulfate is also 24 percent sulfur so we're adding about an extra 20 pounds of sulfur to the soil and the reason we're doing it now as opposed to a month or two ago is that nitrogen and sulfur is both real mobile in the soil and you get a lot of rainfall if there's nothing taking that nitrogen up it can just leach out through the profile and then you've lost it you know you spend a lot of money on nitrogen you'll never recoup and then i'm sure probably quite a few of y'all that have experience with fertilizer saying well, why are you putting that out this early the corn plant's not going to come up for you know, a good seven days it's not going to need very much hardly any nitrogen at all for a month or so and the reason we're doing this is based upon testing that we've done as you can see well you know we're planting green into a uh, pretty fair cover crop and plus down there on the ground we've got a good bit of residue from last year's wheat crop and soybean crop so we've got a lot of residue here that's going to have to decompose here now that uh, the soil temperature is warming up and the air is warming up and uh, for that stuff to decompose that requires microbial activity and microbial activity requires a bunch of nitrogen so what we found out in the past when we're planting green into cover crop especially in the heavy residue situations is that if we uh, did applied our nitrogen normally like we would for no-till our yield suffered because we were having to pay a nitrogen penalty all the microbes were taking whatever nitrogen is in the soil using it to uh, you know fuel themselves to burn up all this uh, residue and organic matter and the corn plant was basically starving itself their early season and since a corn plant determines uh, how girthy of an ear it has by the b5 stage you know we were seeing uh, definite yield reduction so what i found out through testing is that we're not having to apply any more total nitrogen for a year than what we used to in no-till we are having to take a bigger portion of that nitrogen and apply it earlier in the season like at planting right now so he's uh putting out 75 pounds of nitrogen right now and then the remainder of the nitrogen we will come back and side dress liquid at around b5 and because of everything going on in our soil even though the corn plant's not going to be using the nitrogen i'm not worried about it getting lost because there's other things that will be using the nitrogen specifically all the microbes you know the microbes will be using the nitrogen and then uh you know as the microbes die off a lot of that nitrogen will then be returned back to the soil and then by that time the corn plant will be big enough and then it'll start utilizing the nitrogen you know that's kind of the whole basis of our theory on our fertilizer management is to cycle nutrients to where hopefully the only nutrients we ever lose in theory is what we actually remove off the field whenever we harvest our crop otherwise we just want there to be a continuous cycle of nutrients throughout the year to where nothing is left for the environment to remove you know we saw last year in our corn crop you know, we fertilized for good yields. Well, we did make good yields. So there was a lot of nitrogen left in the soil. And then we planted the cover crop and then the cover crop took up a lot of that excess nitrogen and it's now storing it. It's storing it for the next crop. Whereas if we didn't have that cover crop, 
a lot of it would have just leached out over the winter and it would just be in, you know, money, money wasted. And, you know, not just nitrogen, you know, sulfur is also mo mobile in the soil. We used to get a plentiful amount of sulfur from the atmosphere in the form of acid rain. But with all the emissions controls now, we've now lost a very valuable source of sulfur that we're not getting. And now we've got to apply it ourselves in our, in our fertilizer. You know, there's a lot of micronutrients like boron mobile in the soil. Uh, potassium, for years, everybody thought potassium was not mobile in the soil. But it's not near as mobile as what a nitrogen sulfur is. But yes, it can move through the soil and it can be leached out. Phosphorus is one of the phosphorus, magnesium, calcium. Those are ones that we really don't have to worry very much about losing. Once it's in the soil, it's tied pretty tight to the soil uh, colloids, and uh, you know they do, the, they don't get moved real easily down through the soil profile. The use of cover crops makes those nutrients more available than traditional because as uh, we have cover crops out here pulling up your calcium and your magnesium and a few other nutrients well then the soil coll colloid then releases some of those tightly bound nutrients back into the soil solution to where you have more so then when your cover crops you know then decompose you got the uh, additional nutrients that have been released from the soil colloid into the soil solution, but then you've also got nutrients from the decomposing organic matter also, uh, also building your fertility to make more and more nutrients available to the plant. Now, it doesn't always work that way, but that's the theory behind it. There's a lot of other factors that go into whether, you know, nutrients are going to be available or not. You know, farmers now have gotten very technical with their uh, fertility and specifically applying what they need to each acre. You know, we're one of them, variable rated, taking soil samples, all that kind of stuff. But what, you know, a lot of farmers have found out is that uh, you know, we've got all the mass behind what nutrients we apply, how much we apply, when we apply it. But what we found out is there's so many factors influencing fertility that if you apply X plus pounds of a nutrient, that doesn't mean that you have Z number of pounds actually in the soil available to the plant. So there's still a lot of stuff going on in the soil that we don't understand. You know, we know how to build fertility but at the same time, you know, you gotta spend a lot of money to build fertility. So what we're trying to do with these cover crops is just enhance the soil and make it to where, uh, make it where, you know, we're not having to be so specific with the nutrients. We're doing the right thing for the soil and there will be nutrients available.